We're a theater company of collaborative artists of different mediums, and we specialize in doing contemporary performance. So we love to work in non-traditional spaces. You typically won't find us on a stage. Um, ironic that we're rehearsing on one, because typically we don't work on a traditional stage. And we also like to deconstruct classics. Um, the Nutcracker is a perfect example of that, because we've taken a story that people know, they've seen the ballet, they've heard the music, and then we're ripping it apart and doing our own take on it. So with the Nutcracker, I know George's inspiration was um, the, actual, the, the real story of the Nutcracker, how the, how the actual Nutcracker became this, this character, um, which is this really creepy, bizarre story. So using that as like a springboard, we just kind of exploit the creepiness and put it in a holiday setting, which is even creepier, I think. <laughs> it's cricket. Oh, yes. <laughs> this particular show is kind of like uh, the Nutcracker on an acid trip. And we take, um, you know, the, the basic tenets of the original story and then, you know, we turn them up on their head and then turn them sideways and then put them face down and smack them, you know, all sorts of things. So it's, it's, good. it's a really, really good time, hilarious, nothing like you've ever seen, ever. It's definitely not like a typical Nutcracker. Uh, it's not traditional in any way. Uh, Georgiana, the director, wanted to use a very specific type of clowning uh, called buffoon, uh, buffoonery when uh, we were developing this. Um, and I don't know how she got the idea to focus on Drosselmeyer. I mean, in the ballet, he's the uncle of Clara. Uh, he has an eye patch. He kind of appears randomly and gives her the Nutcracker doll. Um, and so he's just kind of a little, maybe a little odd, a little weird. So naturally, that was a good starting place for us. Uh, and so the first thing we knew we were going to do was incorporate the clowning, the, the specific style of uh, movement and, and interacting with the audience and having some physical, very specific physical traits. Uh, and then as we went from there and kind of just developed the story, uh, it became very different from a traditional Nutcracker that is also happening in, in, around, in and around town. Well, I can't hear it, but I feel the vibrations. <laughs> I told the, act the actors on the first day of rehearsal that their biggest challenge this whole show is not breaking character and laughing at Ryan when he goes off track, because it'll happen. Um, every night something different will happen. He is so great with the audience, so every night the audience brings a different element to it. You know, when he does his question and answer segment with the audience and talks about holidays and um, there's a little magic show, the audience does something different every night, so he will too. <laughs> I think that really draws a contemporary crowd, which is something that No Exit is really interested in, um, drawing crowds outside of a theater scene, because we think that the show would appeal to um, an, a younger audience, an audience that are more likely to attend like an arts event, um, and audience members who just say that they don't like theater. Um, we think that this is something that they would like. I think it, it's a fun way to re revisit something. It is, you know, the Nutcracker reimagined into something that maybe you don't want to see the same, you know, ballet every single year or whatever, but it's it's something new, it's something fun, and it does make you think. I don't know, I don't know if the ballet, you know, makes you think every single time you go see it, but at least this one does. 